let's add those two sinusoids and write them as a beat pattern. So y, 1 plus 2, you could say it's 2a times the cosine, and then there's the sum term k1, um, k1x minus omega1t plus k2x minus omega2t. But you could add the k1s, it'd be k1 plus k2 over 2. Right, well, that's the average k. So you can also write this as k bar for average x, and then the omegas are the same thing. You would add the two omegas, you'd add their negatives, and divide by 2, that's the average omega, minus omega average t. So you got the average frequencies, and then you have, let's see, that was the sum term, you have the difference term, cosine, and here you have the difference in the omegas, delta k over 2, so here the 2 went away because you call it an average, here you keep the 2, x minus delta omega over 2 t. That would be the beat pattern you get, and we know what it looks like if you plot it, um, and the frequencies are fairly close, we've looked at beat patterns, Let's see, we described it as a cosine, so it must be big. All right, so it's going to beat. Okay. Now, let's see, we, now that we've done this, we again have two velocities. We have the velocity of the average terms. Okay. So the velocity of the average terms would be, again, the phase velocity in this case, is what we'd call it. So that would be um, omega average over k average. And really, since um, omega 1 equals k uh, omega, or let's see, since that ratio is the same for omega 1 k1 and omega 2 k2, that's basically just equal to what it was before. v1 equals v2. Those are all, all the same. And in this plot, we know what that is. That's the high frequency part. That's this oscillating part, right? We find that's going at the same speed. The other part is this. This is the group velocity. And it's going at delta omega over delta k. The twos go away. It's the speed of this envelope function. Right? This is what is giving us the beat pattern. It's the lower frequency because it's the difference. A small difference results in a long beat. And we give it its own velocity. We call it the group velocity for a few reasons. One, we call it group velocity because it is created by a group of sinusoids, in this case, two. But you could imagine you could add more and more sinusoids to make some other shape, like a Fourier series. Okay. It's also called group because it is, can be a distinctive velocity. Okay. It's not omega 1, and it's not omega 2, and k1 and k2. It's the difference, so it's distinct. Now, in the case of a non-dispersive medium, these velocities end up being the same. Okay, so let's look. Um, omega 1, k1, omega 2, k2, v1, v2 are the same. We've already determined that because this is a line. We could look at the average of the two. So the average of k1 and k2 would be in the middle, and the average of omega 1 and omega 2 would be in the middle, and that's going to give you the same velocity because it's going against a flat line if you just work it out. And what about delta omega and delta k? That would basically be this amount, delta omega and this amount, delta k. And since this is all working on a line, any ratio is the same, even if you don't do it from zero. All these ratios come out to be the same. So for the non-dispersive medium, you get delta omega and delta k at the same speed. So now I'm going to show you one then. We want to watch this beat pattern move. Okay, so here's one done in MATLAB. And here you can see I've made it a non-dispersive uh, non medium. I have the sine of 2.2x minus 2.2t and the sine of 2x minus 2t. So I haven't written in the beat pattern. I've just made it non-dispersive because in both cases the ratio is 1. Right, 2.2 over 2.2 and 2 over 2. And you can see the high frequency uh, oscillations, the, group, the phase velocity, and the pulses, the group, are going at the same speed. And that's why the pattern is just shifting to the right. Okay. So two velocities there, but they're the same. Let's see what other weird things can happen. 